Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at the pretty amazing geometry node tool that you can work with. And this is known as the IV generator made available by Antoni Bagatini, the same creator of Bagapi. Pretty cool add-on. We talked about this one. It's very interesting to see that the Bagapi add-on now comes with a couple of nice improvements. So for those who didn't see that video, I'm just going to go ahead and put a link in the description where you can check it out. But now you can see that despite the fact that you have the architecture tools that you can use to create walls and windows right now, this also supports scattering, effect of scattering, deformations, and so much more. But today we are going to be taking a look at the IV generator that he just released. And this is pretty interesting. It's a free tool. You can grab it, play with it, and see the amazing things that you can do with it. So with Blender 3.0, the beta open, as this is the version that you need to actually work with this, you can start doing things by first of all, downloading the file and then going over to file, go over to where you have us append and then you need to append the node. So if you open up the blender file and you go over to the node tree, you can double click and select the IV generator. Now, if you select the IV generator, a couple of things would come in. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on append and you can see them. So this looks nice. This is like uh, the basic things that you'll be getting. So if we switch over to render, nothing. But then if we go ahead and select this cube, which we have here and go over to our modify section, click on the drop down, add the geometry node, click on this drop down, add the IV generator. You can start seeing that we're having so much fun. All right. There's a lot of cool things happening right now. You can see that the IVs get generated and, you know, for the best part, tap G on the keyboard and move this around and you can move the IVs wherever you want. Okay. You can move these IVs however you want wherever you want, and you can actually have fun. And it's very interesting to see that this works with both EV and also cycles. So for those that are thinking about, all right, I would like to create IVs. I want to make IVs really quick. I would like to scatter IVs across several parts. This is nice. The geometry node is here. For those who like to also come through to read up on this, you know, you like to study how this is made. This is fun. Lots of fun. So the question is, how do you now work with this on your own file? Let's say you do have a set of models. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, create a couple of models. So let's make that there. And I uh, would also let's launch another one. Let's grab our favorite character, Suzanne, click there, scale her all the way up. And I uh, might just also grab something else. What? Taurus? Taurus looks good. All right, let's do Taurus. So tap G on the keyboard, move that right about there. Okay. So we have one, two, three, and four. So with these ones here, we can choose to add them to a collection. So we can simply just choose to add them to a collection or you can just actually create the collection and then select one, two, and three and drag them all into that collection. Now you need to make sure that you have a collection to work with because if we select the cube and then go over to our modifiers, you would notice that we have a target point and the target point actually deals with a collection set. So we can close this and, you know, just mute it. Now, if we close this now, or if we cancel that, click on this drop down and select collection three, you see it. Nice stuff. So at this point, if we select the cube, tap G on the keyboard and start moving this around. Lovely. So you can now see that in this case, we can proceed to start making us. Let's make a copy of the light here. And maybe we can also make another copy of the light somewhere like there. Mm, looking pretty. So we can now have this. And you can see all of these things in action. So it looks extremely interesting and lovely to play with. Now, there's one thing I would like you guys to also take note of, because right now, once you're looking at the cube, you notice that we don't see it there. So the creator actually suggests this. It would make sense for you to just simply, you know, just keep one node or you can just go ahead and dissolve the node because you're actually using one vertex to create all of this. And for sure, if you like to create even way more stuff, you can just go ahead and move this around. So in most cases, you might want to have multiple stuff. So let's say we are right here and you can just tap E on the keyboard and you can even create way more stuff. And this just makes sense because, you know, you have this entire level of control that you can do. So we can not like so, but, you know, we can move this all the way up and then we can also use this to move things around. So if we also like to extrude this part, we can also use this to extrude that. And this is uh, pretty interesting. So depending on what you like to make at a given point, you have all of this. So let's uh, zoom right and see what we have. Looking nice. 
looking really, really nice. The parameters are here in case you would like to increase or reduce how much radius you like to work with. Depending on the kind of loops you want, you can also go ahead and have fun with them. And uh, the loops, like we mentioned, you can play with the loops, you can play with the height, and you can also explore the textures. So this is, uh, this is more like it. For those who like to grab it, a good thing that we have this one now. So in case you've been wondering about how do I create IVs across surfaces really quick for free, you have it. So you can simply go over to the Gumroad, which I'm going to put a link in the description that can bring you over to Antoni Bagatini's page. It does have the bugger pass saver. And I think this is for render passes and then the render device switcher, which I also think is for rendering. So these two are for rendering and these two are for creating. So the ball is in your court, depending on what you would like to do right now, you can go ahead, grab this and start making that wonderful art with it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.